Hey, what's up, you two? I'm Dewan. So, I don't know if you remember the interview I did with the 14 year old CCNA. Well, guess what? He's back. Michael Hilton is now 15 and he's a CCMP and he's working for an ISP. What's up, Michael? Hey, how you doing, Dewan? It's always a pleasure to be on. Yeah, man. Hey, look, since day one I've been on YouTube, you've always supported me. And so I want to say thank you, first of all. Thank you. You've been supporting me throughout my whole journey, too. Yes, sir. Man, there's so much that's transpired since the last time we spoke. Mm -hmm. you wanna, where do you want to start? You want to catch everyone up with what's been going on with you? Sure, sure. So ever since last we talked, I have, uh, so first day of summer, uh, I got my CCNP. Tishu took me two times, but um, my goal was to have it before summer started, but I got it the day summer started, so June 1st. So after that, um, I went and relaxed in my grandmother's house over there in Louisiana, took a, about a month's trip over there and just relaxed and then came back and I worked on a project uh, with Raspberry Pis with a local car dealership. Did that next day. I went over to an ISP, which my dad used to work at, so he knew everyone really well. And the same day I got hired. Ah oh, man, that that's amazing. Okay, so you're working for ISP. You're still in school, and you have your CCMP. Mm -hmm. How was the journey going from a CCNA and getting your CCMP while you're still in high school? How was that? So the journey was a bit uh, much more intensive than CCNA. So I still had a lot of the same studying techniques. Uh, for example, switch was the easiest exam I took. So once I got that done, it took me about like two, three months. Uh, route was the largest portion. So route took me, I would say about six, seven months of time. And that was like the huge test because I had to get a lot of information on EIGRP, OSPF, of course, BGP, which that took up most of the time. But, uh, you know, got that done. Uh, it took me two times, but I got it the second time, passed really well, and then finally got, got off to T-Shoot, and that's when, you know, school was starting to wrap up a lot. It uh, also took me two times, but I still got it done. Uh, it, was, it was a fun journey. I mean, T-Shoot, at least for me, made me, you know, focus on how I want to troubleshoot. Usually when I was troubleshooting in the CCNA, it was, you know, you, you kind of already knew what the problem was. Right. You know, from a T-shoot exam perspective, it could be, you know, all these things like either something, some wrong IP address and interface is shut down, something wrong with BGP, you know, when you're taking the exam. So that, that exam I really liked because it made me focus on my troubleshooting strategy. Right, right, right. So, all right. So for those that may be on the CCMP journey, you know, with mm -hmm. Cisco changing the new exams, what tips do you have for those that may want to get the current CCMP? So first thing I would say is, you know, go for it. You've still got until February 24th or the 23rd last day to test. That's still enough time to, you know, get your exams going. I believe in order to get the, to migrate, in order to get the new CCMP, you just need to pass the, you know, route and switch. So, I mean, you could just do that and already move on. You don't necessarily have to focus on T-Shoot. But that's my recommended thing to, you know, just keep studying and keep going because you'll have the routing and switching. And on top of that, you'll have enterprise uh, CCNP for infrastructure. Thanks, man. Thanks. Hey, for you to fail your exams and continue on speaks a highly of your character. How did you? you. Yeah, for sure, man. How did you overcome? you know, the, the failure aspect of the certification and then continue on to get right back in there. So an interesting point uh, that I forgot to mention was, you know, a lot of when I was studying for the CCNA and even the switch exam, a lot of the information was already like in the materials like books and videos, you could just do fine with that. Right. But when I took the route, I barely missed it uh, by a few sections because the uh, stuff I missed wasn't covered in any of the videos I had seen or any of the books I've read. Right. So it, it made me rethink and, you know, go back and look up that technology on the documentation. So uh, for both route and T-shoot, when I both failed them the first time I failed them within like 
less than 30 points. So I was really close. So uh-huh. what I always did was, you know, it got me to getting more used to going back and looking at the documentation for yeah. specific technology. For sure, for sure. And, and that's a great point. So during that journey, did you did you lab a lot or did you watch videos? How did you go about your your, your um, preparation? So throughout my whole preparation, what I did, what I enjoy doing is first watching a video. I find that watching a video is much easier than sometimes reading a book to get uh, technology down. So I'd watch a video, read a book and lab. But also when I would watch a video, if there was labs or you know, the instructor was guiding you through. I would also, you know, open up GNS3 and, you know, go along and follow along. And then after that, I would lab on my own. And same with the book, I would go through the examples with the author. And after that, you know, create my own labs or use a, use some resources online like INE's uh, workbooks. Okay, okay, okay. That's what's up. So, all right, you have your CCMP. It's mm-hmm. summer summertime. Before we move on to your job, what are you doing with your summer, man? So right now, what's really taking up most of my summer is my job. Mm. And, um, you know, also spending time with family and friends, uh, trying to get some more exercise done. So that's uh, most of my first part of summer was over there in Louisiana, spending time with my grandmother and, you know, enjoying the outside Louisiana weather and stuff. But now it's, um, you know, work and trying to enjoy it and getting the most out of it and studying and, you know, just going outside a lot more. Okay. Okay. That's cool. I'm glad you're taking some time for you and enjoying this summer and enjoying yourself, man. Cause you've been putting in a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> for sure. All right. So now you're working for an ISP. Mm-hmm. What, what are you thinking at? Um, are you, Tell me what you think about it in your experience and what you learned so far. So from my experience, I think it's a really an excellent way to, at least for me, get experience because, you know, with an ISP, you're obviously dealing with service provider, but you're dealing with also enterprise infrastructure. So it's like an enterprise, but you're also doing uh, transit traffic for other enterprises. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. So you get like, if you're working on an enterprise, but you also get you know, behind the scenes, like how does this work? Uh, like MPLS stuff or, you know, BGP, you know, like learning all these topics, it's it's just amazing. And also uh, troubleshooting and, you know, working with other vendors because ISPs usually are a mix of other vendors like Juniper or like Extreme Networks, you know, of course, Cisco. Right. So getting experience with a lot of different technologies and, you know, learning probably a lot more than you could in some enterprise environments. So as a CCMP, did you find that how little of BGP was is what you do now as for an ISP? Well, right now I'm not doing much for BGP in terms of the ISP right now. Most of my tasks are related to configuring like switches and some of their uh, new servers and stuff. Okay. So I'm more of like doing more layer two stuff than layer three. That's cool. So you're really building that foundation before you get deep in the weeds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Um, how how was that? You know, starting starting with the the layer one, layer two, troubleshooting and configuration. It's a it's a lot more different. At least for me, I I love much more layer three, but it's also good to you know understand you can't have layer three without layer two working. So it's good to understand how you know spanning tree works and all these other protocols work. For sure. uh, behind the scenes and also, you know, creating things like uh, MPLS VPNs and, you know, stuff like that. That's yeah. layer two. For sure. In order to get that BGP working. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. So what's your goal, man? Like you've accomplished so much at the age of 15. It's it's amazing. What is your what is your goal? By the time you graduate, what, what do you want to be? So really what my long-term goal in terms of a career is to become a network architect. Mm -hmm. So I want to get as much experience as I can doing, you know, uh, various engineering tasks. You can't design a network without really knowing how it works well. So that's what I want to kind of branch off into more the engineering side of networking. But 
uh, my end goal is to focus on like cloud and data center and security, uh, more specifically the architecture, because, you know, combining the best of all the worlds together and making, you know, large enterprise environments work. That's smart. That's smart. Uh, I think, you know, in the future, that's where the majority of network engineers would be is mm -hmm. either on the cloud or in the data center. So that's smart that you're already seeing that at your age. But at the same time, man, you have some amazing mentors, bro. Like you are blessed to be in a situation to where you've you've met everybody, it seems, and have, <laughs> <laughs> can you share a little bit about your experience like with mentorship and how it, how it's affected your journey? Sure. So, you know, shout out to all those that have helped me. And, you know, my mentor, uh, Del McKay, he works at VMware. Right. So he, he's my uh, mentor that, you know, I usually go every uh, weekend and, you know, meet with him like through Zoom. But what mentorship has helped me a lot was, you know, at the time I didn't have any experience. And, you know, he had experience. And, you know, when we would discuss things like when studying for my CCNA and, you know, CCNP, uh, we would discuss things like, you know, how is this applied in the real world? And um, also, you know, how to better broaden your knowledge. And with that, he would make me create like, you know, presentations to build up my soft skills to make sure that what I was doing was good in terms of explanation and how to explain myself well. And when I was, you know, doing those presentations, making sure everything was technically accurate. So also helping me not just with technical skills, but with soft skills and present Presentational skills. Man, hey, that's a blessing to have someone like that in your life at this age to kind of guide you along. You know, you you really got a head start. It's what's up. <laughs> so we talked about you want to do security, data center, and everything. What mm -hmm. do you what do you think about the changes with like Cisco certifications and in the industry right now? You know, I really like the changes that they made. It makes, you know, a lot more of the typical engineer get more focused into automation, which is something I'm trying to get uh, myself more into. So I like it how, you know, in their certification tracks, it kind of, in a way, somewhat forces you to now, you know, learn these topics instead of, you know, you would hear about it, but you, some people, you know, they never like really have done anything about it until now because of the changes so i like how they're pushing new technologies you know and also uh dna center which you know from an educational standpoint there's not that many resources available to most people unless you know you're a cisco partner or something but i'm pretty sure like for those that are worried about that cisco will probably have something announced to you know better help you become a better engineer with sd wan and you know network programmability so i really like how they're moving their changes and also, you know, pushing out the platforms. For sure, for sure. So do you think you'll go for like the infrastructure CCIE or the engineer CCIE? Yeah, so I, I would, uh, that's probably my next big goal is to, you know, go for that and get as much while I'm doing that, get as much, you know, programmability knowledge and SD-WAN knowledge as I possibly can. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Man, like, I, I admire you, man, for you. Thank you. <laughs> everything that you've done just to watch your growth. It's like you're just on this path and it's just like an elevator and you're just constantly going up, man. It's, it's a beautiful thing to see. Thank you. <laughs> for sure. Now, what, what for, for someone that may want to follow in your footsteps, whether they're your age, whether they're younger and even older, mm -hmm. what what tips and tricks and words of encouragement do you have for them? So I discussed this on a LinkedIn interview that I had uh, not too long ago. In fact, it's also up. I discussed that, you know, if you probably look at Cisco's website, you go to like CCNP, you know, it'll say things like recommended experiences, like three to five years. What, what I trying to say is, you know, people will say, oh, no, you need to go down this path or you need to have a certain amount of experience to get this certification. Don't listen to that. I mean, you know, learning is, you know, there's no requirements to learning. You could learn anything you want. I mean, I'm a perfect example of, 
you know, I don't, I haven't had three to five years of experience and I could accomplish uh, CCNP. Right. So basic, uh, best um, tips is, you know, just do what you think is best, but don't let like things like that, that you read, bring you down or, you know, think that you're not good enough to, you know, study CCIE topics at a, when you're a CCNA or, you know, move up, even though maybe even study for the IE if you've got less than one year of experience or whatever it may be, you know, don't let that stop you. Don't let those uh, recommended requirements stop you or others telling you, oh, yeah, you need to get your A plus first or you need to go down this path. Do do what you think is best to get there. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to link that interview that you did on LinkedIn in the description of this video, if that's okay. Sure. Thank you. For sure, man, for sure. Before we go, I want to say this. I think that you're an inspiration, and I think, in my opinion, you deserve to go to Cisco Live in 2020. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. I don't know what, what we got to do, who we got to talk to, but I want to be there next year. You know, I don't have any kids playing, and then I would – I hope you're there too, man. I hope we can make that happen. Yeah, I would love to go there. For sure, for sure, for sure. All right, man. Michael, it's been a, a pleasure and an honor to have you on the channel again. I want to wish you much success on your career at, with the ISP or whoever you decide to work for, whoever recruits you, and on your certification journey. And I hope you enjoy your summer, bro. For having me on for this interview. Enjoyed for, sure. It. for sure, man. Thank you, man. Thank Salute, you. bro. Thank you. Yep.